everyone, it's Dr. Desiree Alexander, AKA Educator Alexander, and this is your five minute tip for this week. It's all about breakout rooms in Zoom. So the first thing that you want to do is actually turn on your breakout rooms. So you would come to the website, zoom.us, go ahead and log into your account. If you don't have an account, you can create one, you can do it completely for free. And then when you log in, you want to come here to settings. So go ahead and click settings. And then we're going to click in meeting advanced. You can also just scroll down, but I know that it's in meeting advanced. I'm just going to click it. And I want to turn breakout rooms on. So you want to click it. Of course, mine is already turned on, but you want to click it to make it blue and that will be turned on. You can also check this that says allow the host, not any co-host, but the host to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. So that's it pre-assigned breakout rooms. So that's all you have to do to actually turn on the option to use breakout rooms. And then if you wanted to do the pre-breakout room, when you come here to meeting and you schedule a new meeting, you would of course go ahead and fill out all the awesome stuff. And of course you could do this on a free account. This is a free account. If you scroll down, you'll see breakout room pre-assigned. So if I check that, it's saying, hey, what rooms do you want? You can also import it from a CSV, but I'm going to say I wanna create a room. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And then this is my breakout room, and then I'm going to add participants. So the key to this is you wanna use the exact same email address that they're going to be using to log in. So it works a little bit better if you're using let's say a Google account or something that you, you know that the student will be using if you're using this with students. If you're using this with adults, it may get a little bit, um, a little bit hairy because you don't know what email account they may be using. So I typed in the email address and I'm going to hit enter. So now when that person signs in, they're automatically going to be assigned to breakout room one. Then I can go ahead and add more participants. I can also come here and add more breakout rooms. If I click on the top part right here where it says breakout room one, I can actually change this. And let's say I wanna call it science lab one or whatever. You can make up little cute names, however you want to. And go ahead and click enter. So there you go now, it's science lab one. Uh oh So there you go. You can come here and add more participants. Notice that you can create up to 50 breakout rooms ahead of time and assign a total of 200 participants. So if you're going to have more than that, then you can't use the pre-assigned breakout room. So just keep that in mind. But there you go. That's how you do it. And now I'm going to show you how to do a live breakout room. I taught this during a webinar about the intro to Zoom and the intro to Meet. So if you're interested in that, go to the webinar section and watch it. But I'm going to just repost that one section about breakout rooms right now. Let's get started. Breakout rooms. So this is how you do breakout rooms. And then we're going to take questions and then go to Meet. So with breakout rooms, it's showing me that I have 98 participants in this meeting right now. I can either assign them manually, which means I wanna actually move people. With 98 people, there is no way. So I'm gonna say automatically, right? So notice I have one big breakout room. I want you to look at this right here. Look at this number down here. As I'm scrolling up, notice it's telling me how many people are going to be in each room. So if I'm like, okay, I only want like three to four people in a room. All right, there I go. So I'm gonna have 26 breakout rooms going at the same time. Are you able to monitor all of them at the same time? Absolutely not, but you can go from room to room, which I'm about to show you. Does the recording go into the breakout room? No, okay? So when I'm ready to create, I'm just gonna create like massive rooms because I don't, I just want to show you this. All right, there you go. So when I want to create rooms, I'm going to hit create rooms. So notice I have breakout room one, breakout room two, breakout room three, breakout room four. If I need to come and read, like I'm like, oh no, I made a mistake. Just come right here to recreate. And then you get this box again. 
So I can actually recreate throughout the meeting. Just because I put you in breakout room one doesn't mean you have to stay in breakout room one the whole meeting. Because I can come here to recreate and just recreate it as I want to every time I move you to a breakout room. Under options, when I move you to a breakout room, when I'm ready to call you all back, the default is it's going to give you 60 seconds to come back. Sometimes that's really long. So sometimes I'll come here and say, you know, I only want 15 seconds. And I wish there was somewhere I can just say I want my default to be 15 seconds. There may be. I just haven't found it. Throw it in the chat if you found it. Because I'll go through the chat a little bit because I'm kind of ignoring the chat. So I'll go through the chat more a little bit later. But, um, but right now, as far as I know, you have to do this every time. And it's like, ah. But the default will be 60. Or you can just not do a countdown. I suggest doing a countdown though, because I've been in meetings, not in Zoom, but in other platforms where we're talking. Yeah, she make me sit and you're already in the, you're back into the meeting room. <laughs> it's like, oh no. So you may want to do a countdown. Um, you can also do automatic breakout rooms. So that means, hey, I want to break out for 10 minutes. I'm going to be talking to my kiddos, right? So automatically stop the breakout room in 10 minutes and notify me when the time is up. Awesome. So, and then you got a lot of participants to return to the main session. That means when they're in the breakout room, let's say something happens, they don't feel safe, they're going to have a leave button at the bottom of the screen where they can leave and come back to the main room. You'll be notified if anybody goes back to the main room. And then move our participants automatically. I, I mean, I wouldn't suggest that, but you can. You can. I guess you can, because some people don't, some people don't click join, so it just won't give them that option. It's going to force them into the breakout room. So yeah, I probably would use that maybe for students, depending on the age level. So they, I haven't used it yet, but I like it. So there you go. So when I'm ready to open the rooms, I'm ready for you to move to your rooms. I'm going to click open all rooms. But before that, Cheryl and Hannah cannot be in the same room. There is no way. There is no way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move Hannah, notice move two, I'm going to move Hannah into room four. Let's see, I think everybody else is, Belinda and Carol, no, they think, they think I'm crazy. Belinda and Carol will not be in the same room. But you know what, I don't feel like moving, I want the rooms to stay a good number. So I'm gonna come here and exchange Carol. I'm going to exchange her. Well, I can't do Cheryl because I already know how that's going to work. Where Kim at? I just saw Kim. All right, whatever. There you go. I'm going to exchange her for Kim. So now it actually exchanges them into the different rooms. So when I click open all rooms, do not click on the room. Somebody always does. Let me change this time because then we have to sit there for 60 seconds and wait for it. To, do not click on the room all right so i'm going to hit open all rooms and you're going to get a box that pops up that says hey come to this room do not click on the room so notice all participants have been invited so i'm looking at this computer it invited me to break out room one i can say join or there we go it can say join or later so don't join notice that we have some unassigned people this can happen for different reasons if after you after you created the rooms they left and came back it can be sometimes you just left out I, I don't know so if it ever happens you can just come here like as people are joining their rooms you can just come here and assign them notice the numbers right here tell me i have three rooms with 19 so i'm going to put them into these 19 and usually i'm saying something because when you get really good at this you can talk through it you can still be teaching while you're doing this because you're not gonna have it on the screen, right? So I can say, um, okay, so if you didn't see it, don't worry, you're about to get it. It's gonna pop on, pop on your screen at any time, right? And you saw the big red number at the top. So if any of these people leave their room and come back, that number will pop up for me. So I'll be able to see, ooh, somebody's in the main room. Somebody comes late, that number's gonna pop up. So anytime you have someone unassigned, that number's gonna pop up and you can see, oh, I need to go and grab that person and put them in a room. When you want to join the different breakout rooms, notice for each room they have, join. So I can just come here, open this up, 
go here, listen. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're doing good. Come back here, click here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, okay, they're doing good. Well, that's good. That this <laughs> I'm sure she's wondering why she's in a breakout room by herself. So if this happens, the student can actually ask for help. So you'll get this. I'm glad she did that. Um, but you'll get this, and then you can go. You don't even have to look like, oh, where's Nancy? Where is Just join. Join breakout room, and then go ask Nancy what she needs. So there you go. That's how you do breakout rooms. And then you can just join, join, join until you're ready to close them out. You can still move people around as you're going. So if somebody, you know, is like, I don't like you, you can move them around. When they're in the breakout room, their chat is just for that room. Okay. The cool thing is they do see the chat from the main room. So if you had instructions, put it in the chat before they go into the different rooms because then everybody will be able to see the instructions. But then when they get into that room and they start chatting, that chat is only for their room. You can also broadcast a message. Like I'm about to broadcast a message to all the rooms that says, click the leave button in at the bottom of the screen. You shouldn't have joined the room and hit broadcast. So now they all got a message. You're not going to see because you're not in your room, but oh no, you did see it because I see it on this one. That message that popped up that said from Dr. Desert Alexander, click on me. So there you go. And then when you want to close all the rooms, you just come here and click close. Okay, I do have somebody in your room. So you'll see the 10 seconds. So close and notice it says, hey, we're giving them and it has a countdown. So as people are coming back, I'm like, guys, we have about five seconds till everybody comes back. I can't wait to hear what you guys are talking about. And now all the breakout rooms are closed. Okay, my people that just returned, I told you not to click on the button. Um, but that's okay. So if I wanted to recreate the rooms now, I can just hit create all rooms. It actually moved people around. And I can just do this and create other rooms. So that's breakout rooms, guys. Do, 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 do.